Hi, I am Gaspar Malone, inviting our Shir Research Manager from CDM Seeds. Uh, in a global company with focus in soybean breeding, I'm currently located in Londrina City, uh, in south of Brazil, where we have our uh, headquarters uh, for research breeding in, in Brazil. And we have our uh, uh, biotechnology complex uh, with the uh, molecular breeding and gene editing labs. <coughs> And I will tell you what uh, about the, how uh, we are implementing the agri -seek technology at our lab uh, in, comp in partnership with the uh, Thermo Scientific. So uh, CDM Seeds is an uh, Argentinian soybean breeding company uh, that uh, since 18 had been go uh, had working for uh, to get soybean varieties in every country where soybean is sold. Today, we are the number one of the germoplasm provider in South America, with emphasis for Argentina and Brazil. Uh, and since uh, 2015, we are moving our efforts and breeding uh, expertise to US and Canada, uh, where we have three research breeding stations. Uh, and recently, uh, we are moving uh, to China too. At all, uh, our 10 uh, research stations through Argentina, Brazil, US, and Canada, and more than 500 uh, locations for research and development. We are exclusively a germoplasm company, okay? We don't research other or develop uh, shim outrights. So uh, genetic uh, and yield are driving force. The process uh, to obtain a, a soybean variety is considerably more complex than uh, we can see at this slide. Uh, and uh, over the best situation, six, uh, six or seven years, and some thousand dollars are necessary to release a new variety in the market. Uh, so uh, we need to keep focused and be efficient in each breeding stage, always looking, uh, looking for the more efficient technologies. But even so, we can separate the, so the soybean breeding in three fundamental and integrated areas. Breeding itself that involve crossings, nurseries, and thousands of varieties in the field. Testing, that's the team responsible for the test, the best varieties on several locations, and then define the best germoplasm for each environment, because at the, at the end of the day, we cannot forget that uh, phenotype is the combination between genetic plus environment. And the third <coughs> important part in the process to develop new varieties is the biotechnology. In this case, applied by genotyping and molecular breeding for marker assisted selection. And it's about that that uh, we will talk today. It was, uh, if we imagine uh, the evolution of biotechnology tools available for crop readings as in a time windows, we can see clearly the tendency showing that a decrease of the cost per data point, an increase of number of samples analyzed by the breeding companies, with an increasing number of molecular markers available too. That's probably is drove by technologies company like in a thermo scientific that are big in exploring the sequencing technologies beside the diagnostic purpose and can offer to the breeding companies an ultra high throughput genotyping technologies with a low cost per data points, maybe a few cents. Then the breeding companies can apply these technologies and transform your biotechnology labs in powerful data point factories. Undoubtedly, 
that was CDM since the science 2007 when we start with molecular marker selection. At the beginning, the high cost per data point and a few high throughput techniques available, at least for us, was in reality. Few markers in a few thousand samples was our, our, the best scenario. Several thousands of agarose and acrylamide shells are in the past, thanks good. In 2010, we moved, to, uh, we moved from microsatellites markers to SNP markers, and we start to work with the real-time machines. So uh, our throughput growth and our cost per data points began to decrease. But the marker-assisted selection hadn't yet reached to the maximum potential that it should have. Our goal was to make selection in F2 populations, the wider bias of the shermoplasm giving tools for the breeding make the best selection. Then, in 2013, a new biotechnology lab was building in Brazil. For at this time, we were working in Argentina. At our Brazil lab, a new high throughput genotyping platform was installed to run up to 8 million data points a year. And in the last years, with the advent of the new breeding tools as genomic selection, background recovery in assisted backcrossing projects, and new gene mapping pipelines, a targeting uh, genotyping by sequencing platform was installed. Then, the problem right now is not how we generate the data. The problem is how we manipulate and process several million data points that coming from each sequencing run. And at this moment, a partnership was established between CDM and Thermo Scientific. Uh, on this graph, we can see how the number of data points required to the different breeding strategies have increased by exponential rates in the last years. From some 10 or 20 markers for marker-assisted selection to several thousand of markers for shermoplasm recovery and genomic prediction. The AgriSeq platform came to resolve the gap between marker-assisted selection and genome-wide selection. While in the marker assisted selection, you can use a high throughput platform, but based on the approach one by one, it's mean one DNA with one marker. For genome wide selection and assisted back crossing, you need an ultra high throughput genotyping pipeline designed to work up to 5,000 SNPs in a unique DNA sample. And AgriSeq can provide this. At CDM Seeds, the AgriSeq platform was in, uh, initially installed in 2016 uh, with an Ion S5 and one Ion Chef, and this was the first AgriSeq platform installed in, the, in Latin America. And we are, uh, we are proud to say that it talked about the CDM engagement with the innovation and fast incorporation of the largest technologies available. But in 2017, and not different from the years before, our demand for sample analysis increased and drove us to update our equipment to the ION S5 XL, that today is commercially known as S5 Prime. With this update, we triplicate the throughput of the platform. So our throughput per week was comfortable but for running with smaller SNP panels, we still have in sequencing capacity to add more than 384 samples per sequencing chip. Then, in 2018, we contact Thermo Scientific with a new request for, mark for more barcodes to increase the number of samples per chip. Thermo Scientific has met our demand in time, allowing, allowing us and early access to the 384 to the 768 barcode kit. By the way, today we are working with 768 DNA samples per sequencing chip. 
The workflow that uh, we run at our lab is not substantially different from the protocol published by Thermo Scientific. Today we have a step of the protocol which is limiting. The first one, library preparation. Library construction is the process that cuts our throughput in a half. Even so, in high demand weeks, we can make seven, uh, 768 sequencing libraries a day, which just in one lab technician and using some liquid handling to help us. But we are thinking of automating all the library construction pipeline probably this year. That will meet with the real potential of the sequencing platform. Currently, we use two SNP panels in our routine. One uh, with a 1.5 and another with 2.8K SNPs. Both panels are running with 768 samples in the newest 550 chips. That means that certainly the smaller SNP panels could be run and 1152 DNA samples per 550 chips. And we are excited to test this this year yet. Today we are using just the 540 chips with 80 million reads each. Finally, the sequencing data is analyzed by the Lycoris software developed by the bioinformatic teams of the Thermo, and some in-house softwares especially designed for our internal applications. Using this pipeline, you, uh, we have run uh, 50,000 samples in 2018, uh, some 75 million data points. And we are expecting uh, duplicate this number for 2019. This is our AgriSeq platform, some of uh, 384 and 96 thermocyclers for PCR reactions and purifications of the pooling samples, the IonX file, the Ion Chef, and a robust PC for data processing. As you can see, the platform is very simple. For the next years, we are thinking to expand our targeting GPS platform by increasing of samples per ship and number of chips per week. Already in 2019, we will implement the 550 chips in 100% of our sequencing work, uh, workflow. And we have request to the Thermo Scientific the next barcode kit from seven, uh, 769 to 11.52. By 2020, probably uh, one more X5 uh, platform will be necessary because our services of targeting GBS is increasing year by year. Our perspective is to run up to 200,000 samples in 2021. And for sure, we are considering Thermo Scientific as a partner during this process. To finish, I would, like, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, we are really comfortable with the agri technology and very grateful to all Thermo Scientific teams for supporting us throughout this, this period. agri uh, has shown to be a revolutionary technique to attend the crop breeding companies, implementing the largest molecular breeding tools, and we hope the partnership with Thermo go ahead for a long time. 